Hi judges, welcome to another segment of 1RD Wag Memorial High School Senior High School Math TV. Last time, we were able to discuss and find the equation of an ellipse when we are given different conditions. Today, we will continue our discussions with finding the equation of an ellipse given conditions. So for today, we'll be having problem 13 and problem 14. So for problem number 13, find an equation of the ellipse having endpoints of co-vertices located at 5, 6, and 5, 8. That is the first condition. And the second condition is for any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 12. Again, if we are given this condition, we are given the endpoints. The best thing that we need to do is to plot it first so that we would will be able to analyze the major and the minor axis. For this one, we are now given the endpoints of the co-vertices. Therefore, if the co-vertices lie on the horizontal, it is the minor axis. If the co-vertices lie on the vertical line, therefore, it is the minor axis. And the major axis is the opposite of its axis. Okay? Or the perpendicular um, axis of the minor axis. For this one, we are given endpoints of co-vertices 5, 6, and 5, 8. So let us first try to graph 5, 6. So this is 5, 6 co-vertices. Let's say that is W1. And the location is 5, 6. We're given another endpoint, which is 5, 8. So this is 5, 8. Let's say this is W2. And the location is 5, 8. Always remember that if you are given the foci, the endpoints of the foci, the endpoints of the co-vertices, and the endpoints of the vertices, in order for you to solve for the value of the center or the location of the center, all you have to do is to get its midpoint. And the midpoint will serve as the center of the ellipse. We are given co-vertices. Therefore, its midpoint is the center. So, therefore, the center would be 5 plus 5 over 2 because that is the midpoint of the x-coordinate and for the y-coordinate that is 8 plus 6 over 2. And the center will be located at 10 over 2 and 8 plus 6 is 14 over 2. Therefore, the center is located at 5, 7. So, the center is located at 5, 7. This is now the center. The location of the center is 5, 7. Based on the graph, we could say that from the co from the center up to the one point of one endpoint of the co vertices, we could say that that is what that is B from the center going to another endpoint that is also B, <clears throat> and it excuse me and it is very evident that the value of B is just one unit. Therefore, B is equal to one unit. Let's write it here. B is equal to one unit. Therefore, B squared is equal to one. Okay, so we're now done with this graph. And based on this graph, we could find out that the endpoints of the co-vertices lie on the vertical line. Therefore, when we say co-vertices, this is just the minor axis. This is the minor axis. And the major axis is horizontal. We could now write here that we have major horizontal axis. And if we have major horizontal axis, the formula that we will be using is x minus h quantity squared over a squared plus y minus k quantity, quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. So we now have b squared. We now have h and k. But what we do not have yet is the value of a squared. We are given another condition. Another condition is that for any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 12. Again, if you are given this statement, this is just equal to 2a. The given constant is just equal to 2a. In this case, we are given 2a is equal to 12. Therefore, a is equal to divide both sides by 2, cancel 2, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Therefore, a squared is equal to 36. So we're now ready to substitute all the given values into our equation. We now have a squared, we now have b squared, we now have h and k. So we'll be having x minus h, which is x minus 5 quantity squared, 
over our a squared, which is 36, plus y minus, what is our k? Our k is 7, therefore that is y minus 7 quantity squared over our b squared, which is 1, is now equal to 1. And this is now the standard equation of an ellipse having endpoints of the covertices located at 5, 6, and 5, 8. And for any point on the ellipse, the sum of its distances from the foci is 12. So this is how we solve for this problem. Let's now move on to the problem number 14. We're now given it has the foci located at negative 4 minus square root of 15, 3, and negative 4 plus square root of 15, 3. And the second condition is that the major axis is 10 units long. So let us try to write the foci, and let's call this F1. Therefore, F1 is located at negative 4 minus square root of 15, 3. And F2 is now located at negative 4 plus square root of 15, 3. As far as uh, I remember from, us, from our past discussion, we just need to arrange this in this position. Okay, and then write the formula for the foci. And since we are changing the value of x, we could say that this is major horizontal axis. Again, because we are subtracting and adding to the value of x, therefore this is major horizontal axis. And, we, and if it is major horizontal axis, the formula that we will be using is x minus h quantity squared over a squared plus y minus k quantity squared over b squared is equal to 1. So the formula now for the foci, for the endpoints of the foci would be h, k, h plus minus, because this is foci, the variable that we will be using is c, that is h plus minus c, k. Based on this arrangement or this position, we could now identify the center and the center now is located at negative 4, and the value of k is 3. Therefore, the center is located at negative 4, 3. How about for the value of c since we are given the foci? We, are now, we now have the value of c, which is plus minus square root of 15. Therefore, c squared is equal to 15. We now have the value of c squared. We have the value of h and k, but we do not have yet the value of a squared and b squared. We are given the second condition. And for the second condition, we are given major axis is 10 units long. If we are given the major axis, therefore the length of the major axis will always be 2a. Therefore, 2a is equal to 10 units. Divide both sides by 2, divide both sides by 2, therefore a is equal to 5. We now have here a is equal to 5, therefore a squared is equal to 25. How do we solve now for b? So in solving for b, we have now the formula c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. Therefore, b squared now is equal to a squared minus c squared. Therefore, b squared is equal to our a squared is 25. Our c squared is 15. Therefore, b squared now is equal to to 10. Okay, we now have a squared, we now have b, we now have b squared, we now have the center located at h and k. Okay, so therefore, we'll, we're now ready to substitute all the given, all that, um, all a, a squared and b squared and the center to the equation. So this becomes x minus, what is the center? Negative 4, so that becomes x plus 4 quantity squared over a squared, which is 25, plus y minus k, that is y minus 3 quantity squared over b squared, which is 10, is equal to 1. Therefore, this is now the answer to the problem given different conditions. Again, I will re rewrite. So the answer for problem number 14 is x plus 4 quantity squared over 25 plus y minus 3 quantity squared over 10 is equal to 1. So this equation now satisfies the given conditions. So if you have comments, if you have suggestions, if you have questions, 
regarding different problems in, in calculus. So let me know by just commenting. Once again, I am Engineer Jad Edward Hernandez saying that mathematics is always fun. Goodbye and God bless.